This is the Mercedes S-Class Coupe, and it's a little bit like the iconic Barcelona chair in the way that it's super stylish, it's luxurious, and is extremely comfortable. Now, Mercedes has recently updated it, so it's got a new grille, it's got new tail lights, new alloy wheel designs. There's also a new engine and a new steering wheel, and more on that later. Like the Barcelona chair, this car is rather expensive. So, it starts from £105,000, but you can save an average of almost £23,000 on one through CarWow. So if you're thinking about buying a new car, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen to see how much you can save on a new car through our website. So then let's start this review by talking about this new steering wheel. It's the same that you get in the S-Class and it's lovely to hold. It's also got all the controls for the cost technology. So this right-hand section here allows me to control the digital driver's display. So I can swipe through the right-hand dial and go from the normal tachometer through to a sat-nav map, my eco performance, a G-force meter. I can then move into the central dial and that has all my driving data and stuff like that. Or if I press the home button, I can then swipe through all the main functions of the central infotainment system. However, I can also operate them through the main infotainment screen, which I control with this side of the steering wheel. It's got all the usual functions that you expect. I've got navigation with a nice big widescreen map, radio, media, if I want to stream music through the car. I've also got my telephone, my connection facilities, with all like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I've also got internet connectivity. Then we have vehicle control, so I can go through various functions such as the ambient lighting settings. I actually have 64 different ambient lighting colors. Now, as well as using these controls here, I could actually use this swivel wheel down here or this touch pad, but the positioning of it is a bit awkward and you end up with sort of like RSI. Thankfully, there are some shortcut buttons around here, which do make it easier. Generally, I think this system is very, very good. Not quite as good as BMW's iDrive. Yes, I know I always say that, but it is the truth. And for my detailed infotainment video review, click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen. I'll go into further detail on the system and what's good and what's not so good about it. Now, if you don't want to use any of these control input methods, you can just press a button up here for voice commands. And there's 450 different commands this system understands. So, massage seats. Just brought up the massage seats and then I can just choose which one I want. Although there doesn't appear to be one that has a happy ending. Looks like Mercedes has missed a trick here. Still, standard equipment is very good and the massage seats are included as standard though, to be honest. Massage seats in cars aren't that great. Other kit you get includes a panoramic sunroof. Yeah, that's nice that is, I do like it. I also like the fact that you've got this little air blower here which blows warm air around the back of your neck, great in winter. So too are the heated seats and they do get very warm, but you've also got cooled ventilated seats. Obviously the seats are fully electric and look at this, you can even lower and raise the headrest electrically, of course, because it's a Mercedes. Same thing with the steering column, so you just control it electrically as well. You also get a Burmester sound system. This car actually has the upgraded 3D Burmester system, but you don't really need it because the standard one is easily good enough. Other options fitted to this particular car include fine Nappa leather for the seats. Oh yeah, I mean, it does feel lovely, but it costs 6,000 pounds extra. So you definitely want to go on CarWow and see how much you can save on the car. So for instance, this S560 premium AMG line, I'll plug the details in to CarWow and it should cost about 110,000 pounds, but I've got an offer back for just over £91,000. And you can spend some more on options, can't you? Such as these wood inlays, only 500 quid, and they do look nice. Not sure about how they match up in colour to this leather on the dash, but generally I do like the overall look, this kind of wave of loveliness that goes to the car. And generally, quality is good as well. These air vents, they feel metal and robust. What's even nicer are these buttons for the climate control. They're just metallic feeling, and so are the window switches as well. It's lovely, but there are a few cheap pieces of plastic which let the side down. For instance, these door handle inserts, they're really cheap and you may touch those. The air vent surrounds here in the back, cheap plastic as well. Release buttons for the center console, really cheap, nasty plastic. But the worst offender is this fake bit of crystal down here. I mean, it looks like it's come out of a Christmas cracker, not a car that costs over a hundred thousand pounds. At least storage is better than you get with a Christmas cracker. So there's a little area here for your keys and look, a 12 volt socket. This little compartment here, maybe for your cigars, or if you're trying to give up smoking, your chocolate bar. You've got some deep cup holders as well, which is good because it means that they can hold taller bottles. And the door bins are so huge, they can carry big bottles of water. You've got a big storage area here as well. Uh, you can't see from there, so don't worry. I can actually open it 
this way. How clever is that? You might notice that there's some USB inputs there for charging your mobile devices. And that sign there isn't for, yeah, Nespresso. It actually means near field communication, so it can actually boost the signal from your mobile phone if you leave that in there. Finally, let's move on to the glove box, which is pretty big as well. Practicality here in the front. It's impressive for a coupe, but let's check out the back. What I want to point out is these doors open so very wide and look they are frameless as well so they look cool you just gotta be careful not to spear yourself on there when you're getting in because that could be painful the seat moves out of the way electrically to let you into the back and when you get in there and you shut the door you don't have to slam it because look it has soft close it closes itself easy now i'll just move this chair out of the way so you can see what the heck's going on back here pull this one down what happens to my knee room? What's it going to be like? Oh, there you go. As you can see, it's actually all right. Headroom, it's okay for me. Look, I've got about that much space. People over 6'4 may find it a little bit cramped though. The real issue though is foot space. It's just a little bit cramped down there and it could get a little bit tiring over longer journeys. Can't complain about could be spaces back here though, because look, you've got these posh airplane style folds in the back of the seats. Another little storage area here. Actually, this looks like a face. Look, there's the eyes, the nose and the mouth. It's Hello, everybody. Yeah, anyway, there's some storage here as well. If I fold down this armrest, there's, yeah, storage under there. But where are the cup holders, I hear you ask? Well, ta-da! There they are. Brilliant, eh? So this is a strict two-seater here in the back, so you may as well have this armrest down, and then you can rest your arm here, and it is actually quite comfy. You've also got seat eating here in the back as well, which is nice. Bit annoyed though, there is no control for this rear window. I can't operate my own rear window. I have to ask the driver to do it. I mean, I'm sure it's not beyond the wit of Mercedes. They can do heated seats back here. They could do electrically operated window for me to control. Anyway, now you have to be careful when you're getting out of here because of that sloping roof line, you can end up banging your back on it like that. And then you will need to go see a proper masseuse for a proper massage. You won't be able to just rely on those seats. So let's move on to the boot. Now the capacity of this car is about 25% less than the S-Class Saloon, but it's still about the same size as an A-Class and it's a bit bigger than a Bentley Continental GT's boot. All models come with an electrically operated tailgate, obviously. And the boot size, as you can see, is decent enough and the opening quite wide for a coupe's boot. There is a bit of a lip to lift stuff over, but you've got this metal scuff plate so you don't damage your expensive car's paint. There is some practical features here as well. Look, you've got some nets here. That's where you can keep the car's manual. There's also a 12 volt socket here if you ever need to vacuum out the boot. Now these tie down hooks may look a little bit flimsy, but believe me, they are tough. Now under here, you've got some more storage. Actually, some of the space is taken up by the subwoofer from the 3D sound system. There's your tire repair kit because there's no spare wheel on this particular car. But look at this, I can't complain about this. The handle for this storage cover. It's just so posh and expensive, I love it. Now, for more detail on this car's practicality, click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen. See how much stuff you can fit in this car's boot, what it's like fitting a child seat, and some more detail on what it's like in the back seat. Now then, it's time for the car wow, five annoying things about this car. The optional intelligent LED lighting system is very good, and they actually have Swarovski crystals in them, which you think is gonna be kind of cool, but trouble is, they make the car look a little bit too Kardashian. For some reason, the buttons for the rear blind and the little seatbelt butler are hidden away up here rather than being on the door where they would logically be. In right-hand drive versions of this car, the steering wheel is a little bit offset to the left. Look, so it can make you feel a bit twisted behind the wheel. Classic Mercedes. If you want the 360 degree camera or the heated armrests and steering wheel, which you probably do, you can only get them as part of the premium package, which costs £5,000 because it includes a lot of other kit you don't actually want, such as this weird well-being spa recreation thing with some kind of scent which is blown through the air vents, it's all very nasty, and various settings which are supposed to enhance your mood. You have to be careful when opening these big heavy doors on a slope because if you let go of them, they could do some damage. Ow. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The washer jets for the windscreen wipers are actually housed in the blades themselves. So you don't get a big squirt of water at the windscreen, which means that your vision is never impaired. 
You can get the car with something called Magic Body Control, and what it does is uses two cameras in there, which read the road ahead, and they can spot bumps. When you go over a bump, it'll actually slacken off the air suspension, so it just glides over it. That system also includes something called Curve Control. What it allows the car to do is actually lean into a corner, a bit like a motorcycle, so it always feels stable and flat when you're cornering. The optional night vision system allows you to effectively see in the dark, so you can spot dog walkers or horse riders should they dare to be out and about at night. <laughs> the car has OLED tail lights with 66 individual diodes, each with their own glass pane in front of them. Now, when you unlock the car, they do this little dance. Oh, isn't that nice? The optional driver assistance pack has a cruise control which will keep you a safe distance from the car in front. It also has a steering assist function which will keep you in the centre of your lane. And basically, it's one of the very best systems I have ever used. Now it's time to hit the road. This S-Class Coupe is a big car, but it's not quite as intimidating as you may think to drive through narrow town streets. Part of the reason is that you've got a good view going forward. It's quite easy to judge where the corners of the car are. It's not easy to judge where the back is though, because while the rear window is quite wide, it's not very deep. Now, one of the reasons you're gonna be wanting one of those 360 degree cameras is because when you go through a narrow gap and you're close to an obstacle, it automatically pops up and shows you all the way around the car and that could save you just scuffing your bodywork. What also helps when maneuvering is the steering because it's very, very light. Also, you don't have to turn the wheel that much as I'll illustrate now to go to full steering lock. Look, that's full steering lock and so it does just make it so much easier to weave about the place. I also like this feature, the fact that the gear selector is here on the steering column. So for going reverse and then to drive, it's right at your fingertips, it's great. And that just makes it nice and easy and effortless, which is what this car should be. Now, for most of the time, the suspension is brilliant. It's almost as though you're flying up the road, but a bit like when you're flying, occasionally you do hit a bit of turbulence because the odd sharp bump can catch it out and you get like a jolt for the cabin. It just surprises you. Now, if you don't want speed humps to surprise you, get that magic body control because it makes this car go over them like they're not there. The gearbox is really smooth and relaxing as well. It just blends the gears together. You wouldn't know it has nine ratios. You can hardly feel it changing unless you suddenly floor the throttle and then it changes pretty quickly to get a move on. This particular car is the S516. It's got the new four litre V8 twin turbocharged engine and it's plumbing good, you know. So naught to 60, that's 4.6 seconds. It's super fast and smooth when you want it to be, when you just want to coast along. But if I put it into sports mode, it gets a little bit fruity. It makes more of a noise. In fact, this is this. <laughs> it does a cheeky little fart when you lift off the throttle. Do you know what? I reckon this 560 is actually the pick of the range. You don't need the full fat, high performance AMG versions. It should give better economy as well. So I'm getting, ah. Uh, 22 miles per gallon. Nah, because it's us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not too bothered about climate change. It'll make Britain warmer anyway. Now, for more information or to see how much money you can save on this or any car, click on the pop out banner in the top right hand corner of the screen to get a car wow. So, then, what's my verdict on the Mercedes S Class Coupe? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy it. This is a beautiful, lovely, fabulous car. And that's all I have to say on the matter. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, comment on it and share it. Also, click on our logo to subscribe to this channel. And if you click on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually watch more of our content. Meanwhile, click over to the right to go to our deals page to see how much money you can save on a new car at CarWow.